Hello and welcome to the channel, it's the Eradicator, and it's been a long time since we haven't heard of Manolor, the upcoming medieval strategy game that is also going to be a city builder at the same time. An impressive project here from the single developer at Slavic Magic. It's been about a year since we had last some news about the game, and uh, well, since then it's they've been quite silent, which, well, quite frankly, a lot of people were thinking it was a little bit, uh, not suspicious, but... Uh, worrisome uh, but fear not guys we've got some amazing news and the wait was perhaps worth it because it looks like Manor Lord is going to be a much better experience and we're going to find this out in today's video Alright guys, so what happened with Manor Lords? There's been a really long post on their Steam page and we're gonna go to the bottom here because I think it's perhaps the most important and we can see that the developer at Manor Lords has been very busy on the business side because they have now new partners and the first one I thought was a, a little bit worrisome here. They got a, a grant from Epic and I was like, oh man, another of these games is gonna go to uh, Epic and be an Epic exclusive. Luckily, no, it's not. And it looks like this is like a no strange attached um, grant. So Epic really believes in the game. They believe that they're gonna make a return on investment once the game is on their uh, page. But they also believe that it's going to be so successful that they can afford this game being on other platform as well like for example GOG or Steam so that's great and uh, because I really was afraid that uh, this was going to be a Steam uh, Epic exclusive it's not going to be the case it will be on GOG and still on Steam obviously but not just that they are going to have a publisher as well Hooded Horse who is also publishing uh, Final Frontier a game that we're also looking forward to developed by another solo developer here Hooded Horse trying to make a name for themselves with some of these uh, upcoming studios and that's really wonderful obviously and uh, here uh, probably this means that uh, this uh, game is going to have extra funding that is going to enable perhaps more development time and more uh, more technical updates and this is what this lengthy post is also about you can see it's super big with a lot of details we're gonna go through those but what I like the most is that we get to see some of the differences between when we last saw this game Mano in 2020 and today in 2022 and there you can see the difference is quite stunning here we have a first explanation about what's going on with buildings which were already quite great looking I think for the time that was two years ago but when you look at how it is now it looks even better uh, more details better textures they've been completely reorganized with the help of an architect specialized in medieval architecture from central Europe usually Ger what is today known as Germany that is the type of style that this game is going to look like and I said that the result over there is absolutely phenomenal so one of the concerns that the developer had also was how the cities and the building looked like in the game and especially how they were represented as faithfully as possible to how it was in real life which was not really the case in the previous iteration to do that they had a look at the uh, old registers of ancient town maps like those that you can see here so that they could have something that looked closer to how it really was back in those days and again this is the result in game with a little uh, burg house here in behind the plot where the owners could do whatever they wanted it could have like a vegetable gardens uh, some goats or even some chickens as you can see here another problem also especially in late game was how eventually as your economy grew bigger some of the uh, farmers or the peasants eventually uh, became more specialized and had more high-end jobs for example some of them would be cobbler or blacksmiths right these artisans were always located on the outskirts of the city simply because they were placed last and that didn't make any sense because usually those were some of the richest people in the towns and they tended to be in the city center closer to the church which were the most convenient places as well as closer to the uh, central square where they would be selling all of their goods so to be able to do that they have implemented a new artisan conversion house that means that probably 
what they was what's going to be happening in the game is that at some point an artisan would be buying a house in the town center and convert that house into their workshop meaning that the people who are living there will have enough money to buy another house or build another house somewhere else and that's a very interesting mechanism here on how cities eventually grow now next we're going to talk about regions and the regions originally were very small too small in fact according to the testers so the developer has decided to make them much bigger but at the same time there's going to be less of them because they will be taking much more uh, space within the game well so originally he was hoping to have 50 of those smaller regions which apparently looked like this so they were indeed really tiny and now they're going to be much bigger more like what we're seeing here so well that's definitely a positive also the camera has taken the thing improved originally it was supposed to be an isometric 3d type of camera this is changing now and he wants to give far more flexibility uh, you can yeah of course sure look at the game like in a traditional RTS game but the idea is to really enjoy how beautiful it is and uh, enjoy the sceneries of your own creation as if you were an actual person walking there on foot and it looks fascinating now talking about the style we talked about the architecture a little bit before and uh, yes they want to give this type of you know 30th century type of holy roman empire architecture the holy roman empire is basically the ancestor of today's germany and here in particular the houses that were in the franconian region now franconia is a region that is located in the northeast of bavaria and if i am correct uh the south of saxony uh, I've been to Germany uh, quite a few times, so uh, I think I'm correct, but if I am wrong, let me know in the comment section down below. And this is the new style here on how these buildings look like. And you can really especially uh, see that with those typical uh, spiky uh, sh towers, which you can still see today when you go to Germany. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely very realistic looking. I'm loving uh, what I'm seeing here. And uh, we have more different types of buildings. You see, this was actually the concept art. And uh, they want to really make it as uh, original and faithful as possible. Very similar to when you're playing Kingdom Come Deliverance, which doesn't take place too far from this uh, region. Bohemia is just a couple of hundred kilometers away. So that's why the style is very similar. And the Kingdom Come Deliverance obviously was a very successful game, so they probably want to maybe uh, piggyback a little bit here on the success of that other game to make this one successful as well. But why not? Because it's a fascinating area. It was also a very rich area too back in those days. Uh, they've also reworked on characters. Let's be honest, the characters were perhaps the the things, the assets that, looks, that looked the worst in the previous videos or in the previous content that we saw from uh, Manor Lord. So there's been a complete rework and definitely they look much more realistic with better uh, facial traits, more details on their clothes, more concept art was done as well for the, the armor and the different types of outfits that we're seeing here. You can definitely see uh, that the, yeah, the resolution here on those faces, definitely here, uh, new faces, hairstyle as well was extremely important. So they actually uh, generated actual hay photos that were head photos that were learned uh, with uh, deep learning AI that allowed these faces to be created. And yeah, the result is definitely quite spectacular as you can see here. Next, we'll be talking about the recruitment system and the developer here originally wanted us to hire people based on the wealth that we had so we could for example hire mercenaries or maybe noblemen perhaps but this is not really something that the testers wanted to do they also wanted to recruit their peasants as well so the developer tried to create some kind of retinue system where it would be possible to recruit those peasants but at the same time not arm them as well as how mercenaries or noblemen were and the result looks like this kind of band of uh, ragtag peasant but at the same time looking quite menacing and capable of doing some sort of damage I love what I'm seeing here uh, they've also redone some of the animation including finishers to make the combat look more satisfactory when you're looking at it next let's talk about farming here farming which is going to be of course one of the key elements of Manor Lord simply because farming represented the overwhelming majority of a country's economy 
back then in the Middle Ages. And one of the feedback that the testers gave the developer was that farming was too repetitive and micro heavy. Obviously, there must have been a ton going on here when you play the game, but you don't want to be spending most of your time managing the farmers because you want to be checking out, you know, eventually your soldiers or your artisans, or maybe you want to see how the climate is affecting your resources or how you are going to develop your town around. So you can't spend that much time uh, on farming. You have to make sure that your uh, pe peasants know what to do, reinforce the AI as well. And that's exactly what they've been trying to do here, trying to have the workforce work more intelligently here with extra individual AI autonomy. They've also there's also a brand new livestock system. There used to be uh, some kind of a shed where the livestock would eventually be uh, stored and th then it would be uh, sold to uh, to traders. But the problem is, of course, those uh, th those buildings were empty. 99% of the case, it was pretty empty. So here they try to have some kind of new system uh, that was a little bit more dynamic as well when it comes to trading livestock. Next, we'll talk about the trade system and especially the economy, which is going to be an extremely important part of the game, obviously, as you can imagine. And here they have also updated their trade system to make sure that traders only get and buy and sell what they need and what they have, which is going to, of course, make trading here more effective and prevent uh, players from having uh, lots of uh, stocks of useless materials and items that they don't want. They've also noticed in their playtests that cities tended to be always looking the same. So they've created these water knot system so that uh, eventually you're going to have to be paying attention to how water is flowing or how water is located in the soil but of course uh, it's always going to be changing water can be depleted uh, based on the weather i suppose that eventually it will also move to other places so that way uh, players will have to follow where the resources are located eventually lands will become more or less fertile and vice versa and uh, it's going to also make uh, players uh, be more mindful of their environment. Uh, speaking of cities always looking the same, they've also noticed that um, markets kind of also uh, looked always the same. And the uh, players were always creating some kind of uh, terrible snake looking market roads, which uh, were not very realistic. So they were instead try to, trying to find some, uh, some ways to make markets look like in real life, which were usually happening in town centers. And also we have a much more satisfactory uh, visual aspect here, which kind of looks like uh, realistic instead of having those uh, st stands here that we have on the side of the roads, which uh, look, look very weird let's let's be honest uh, we talked about how artisans uh, were buying houses in the center of town and uh, this is really something that they've been trying to do here wealth uh, instead of wealth being located on the outskirts of the city uh, wealth will be in the center of the city and then will be propagating towards the outskirts of the city this is how it was always supposed to be this is how a town used to like in to look like in the past and you can see here that these cities uh, look yeah sure very uh, player made at the same time not realistic and looking boring and that is definitely something that the developers wanted to avoid another thing that the developer wanted to avoid was how people perceived wood that wood being just some kind of generic resource like in age of empires where it's just called wood or timber you just cut it and that's basically it but wood was so much more than that in medieval times it was one of the main resources for a lot of different activities including construction but also how people were heating themselves and this is exactly what we're going to talk about here wood is going to be divided into two different sections timber which obviously will be used for construction and firewood which is going to be used for or heating and keeping your population alive which leads us to the last segment here what happens when you fail to meet the requirements of your population well eventually they are going to rebel a new rebellion mechanic was added they are going to split form bands of brigands uh, they're going to wreak havoc to your uh, region or to your particular area they will burn buildings they will loot and leave and eventually you know if all of your region end up in such a state you will also lose the game and that's also something very important here you need to cater to your population to the needs of your population so that you have a nice little 
county that works quite well. And that's basically it here for this update of Manor Lord. Very interesting update here. Good to see that the devs have been hard at work, that they have new partnerships, that they can now commit to this project full time thanks to all of the funding that they got from uh, either Epic but also Hooded the Horse Studio. It's wonderful. Do we know the uh, the release date? Well, it used to be 2022, uh, but now it's just to be announced, unfortunately. So we don't have anything there uh, to talk about, but I'm sure that we'll have more announcement, hopefully this year, that give us more updates on the state of the project. Anyway, guys, that is all for today. Uh, let me know in the comment section down below, guys. How excited are you with the changes that we talked about today? I am super happy. I've been waiting for two years already since the the project was announced i'm pretty sure we can all wait for one or two years for it to be playable and polished so that we can all have a great experience anyway guys that is all for today thank you so much for watching this has been the eradicator i will see you guys later